All right, hello folks. Thought I would uh, do a little bit of filming while I'm working on this painting. And we have the wide angle, so you can see into my kitchen and a little else around my studio. I'm Pura Draculea, by the way. I guess that probably shows um, underneath the video. So I figured I would do a little video on this painting. First of all, let me zoom in so we can see. This is Miles, by the way. Um, for anybody, all like four of you, who uh, may have heard my Ricky B. Rat show. This is Ricky's girlfriend's baby's half-mouse cousin, Miles Marev. And I've posted, uh, I had another project that I kind of started last year where I was inking cartoons with Miles going on holiday and whatnot. So here we go. I don't know how fo well in focus that is, but... Uh, a little uh, acrylic portrait. Decided it would be fun to start um, incorporating my characters into my paintings a bit more. Um, if the sound is weird, I'm moving around. It's probably mostly going to be coming out of the left channel once I sit down. So, Miles, ah, he's a little bit of a huckster. His dad is the biggest used car salesman in all of Mostyn. Dad being the mouse guy, uh, the mother being the rat, and uh, Miles takes after his dad Larry quite a lot, but he, instead of being a used car salesman, he has moved to Ratsville across the canyon. He is an accountant. On the side, he's an Elvis impersonating wedding officiant. Uh, all sorts of other stuff going on with Miles that will slowly become revealed, but... Uh, I had this vision of Miles deciding as someone who has just moved to Ratsville and realized how stupid some of the local politics are, as they are in any place, really. Anyways, Miles has decided to move, well, he already did move to Ratsville in the story, and he is deciding he wouldn't mind getting a little uh, taxpayer money for himself, so he decided he's going to move into a politics as a sideline, or at least he's going to try. And thus we have the unfinished, well, the whole painting is unfinished at this point, but uh, the definitely unfinished, you can see the under painting where I do uh, a really thin down, this is acrylic by the way, really thin down wash just to get some color down so we don't have the uh, bare naked white canvas. And it gives a little depth to the colors as well. But uh, Miles is running for Ratsville City Council. And I don't know at this point how clear um, the slogan is. But it says, corruption you can trust. You know, there is such a thing as too much honesty in politics. <laughs> Anyways, that's his slogan. And um, a couple weeks ago I did one of my uh, Ricky B. Rat sketchbook cartoons. Um, with a version of this, just the marker sketch of Miles showing the uh, campaign poster to Ricky, who is a little concerned about the um, slogan. As uh, one follower commented on a, I think it was the July 4th uh, sketchbook comic, the difference between Miles and Ricky is the difference between high intelligence and high wisdom. Miles is smarter, but not necessarily wiser. Anyways, the other thing I'm going to mention before I zoom in properly and um, sit down and work is I noticed I started this portrait in a um, portrait painting workshop up in Ladysmith um, taught by Mitchell Villa last month. And I just had this vision because it's a two-day workshop, so second day, you kind of work on your own projects. I wasn't sure who I was going to paint, but I had this vision of Miles at the podium with that slogan. But Miles, up until now, has always been drawn as a line cartoon. So, you know, now I, I think you can probably guess which American politician is the reference for the pose and the flags in the background and whatnot, but... Uh, um, Anyways, as I started to fill in with the shadows and whatnot, based more on the line drawing of this, I was thinking, going like, 
you know, he vaguely looks like a little bit like my Uncle Peter around the eyes a little bit, but I didn't really think much of it. You know, that wasn't intentional or whatnot. I actually I haven't seen Peter in years. It's it's a whole story. We don't even know if he's still alive, actually. But the next day I was showing this to my dad, and the first his first thing out of his mouth is, Why'd you make him your Uncle Peter? Anyways, so uh it's not my Uncle Peter, it's Miles, but if anyone happens to know my Uncle Peter, they may recognize that he looks similar. Actually, Uncle Peter used to be a used car salesman. So, uh, some family connection there, I guess, with uh, Miles' um, dad. Anyways, so, what we are working on today is I've got to get that uh, done. In theory, let's see here, today is uh, August 28th, Feast of St. Augustine. Uh, September 4th is the deadline for the local Cowichan exhibition, and they do have a painting uh, division. In theory, I would like to get this done and entered into CowX. Or I should say, I would like to get it entered into CowX. That doesn't mean it's going to be done, but it's going to be presentable. And then if I add in other stuff like a gloss finish or whatever, you know, that would be afterwards. But oh, and the other thing I wanted to point out... It's not so much a parody of the American flag, but, uh, you know, Mostyn, Ratsville, they like their cheese. Rats do anyways. Mice, a little more vegetarian, apparently. But, uh, so I figured what would be more perfect for the uh, flag of Ratsville than, you know, if they got the uh, cheddar cheese in the corner and then the, instead of stars and stripes, it's cheese blocks and... I guess cheese slices, you know, a couple different kinds. That kind of looks, it's a little, t the light looks a little too creamy, yellowish to be e damn, but there's many kinds of light colored cheeses that aren't pure white. And then, you know, I don't know what the uh, one in the, the darker yellow is. Probably something where it's spelled cheese with a Z or a Z, depending what country, whether you're American or British. And not so much, you know, natural cheese color. Um, but anyways, we got that. And what else am I going to blather about before I sit down to paint? Uh, I'll probably be a little edit point when I sit because i got to adjust the camera. I'm not sure how well it's actually going to focus from back here. You know, all of four feet away. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh, never mind. I just... Lost my train of thought. That happens. Oh, yeah, the suit. That there we go. Um, he was going to have a navy blue suit because I thought that was more like a power suit, politician suit. Except just something. Once I put in his hair, I was looking, going something just says '80s televangelist to me. And for some reason, I was thinking that means powder blue suit. So I went with that. And then I was later on doing a. Google search for 80s televangelists, and they're all wearing navy blue suits, so, you know, apparently I got it wrong, but whatever. Uh, anyways, so, let's get going with filling in Miles' little podium, and, well, I don't know how far we'll get today, because I don't want this video to be, like, stupidly long and boring, um, but uh, we'll see how far we get with his little podium and filling it in. And the other thing is, this is super zoomed in, um, but I just wanted to show a detail of um, what the wash looks like underneath. And you can see I did a grid. This I did with just like acrylic paint pens. Um, apparently, what I've been told is don't do an underdrawing with pencil because the graphite will come up. Um, and sit on top of your work eventually, and then everyone will see your grid and your pencil. So, best to do it with paint, and I want to be more precise than just, you know, brush and watered down paint, so I use acrylic paint markers. But, um, when I zoom in on some of the stripes, there are areas I will have to go over a few times and do so like this week if this is to make it into CowX, <laughs> because the grid shows through. Um, I should have used a lighter color, um, but anyways, so you can see that, um, so I just use the grid method. If the better thing to do is definitely if you have a projector to use the projector. So, 
Um, I am cheap, so I have not gotten myself a projector yet. I should. But uh, anyway, so we'll back off just a little bit. And so I was thinking, what color should I do Miles' little podium? Because the logical thing, if he's talking about corruption, you know, like, he's all about the money, right? So that would be green. We're going to try that. And his eyes are also green. Uh, I'm pointing at something that's not in the frame. Duh. Never mind. But um, you might have noticed when I was zoomed in earlier. Uh, actually, I will just zoom in and pan up. Come on. Yeah, so you can see there his eyes are green, which, you know, these little cartoon guys are done in black ink, generally speaking, and at a size where you don't see the color. So I wasn't necessarily even planning to make his eyes green, but then when it came time to fill the amendment, I'm like, I don't know. He doesn't seem like a brown-eyed dude, and he definitely didn't seem like a blue-eyed dude, so that kind of leaves the one option. Although, I mean, hey, it's a cartoon character. He could have whatever color eyes he wanted, but... Anyway, so he is a green-eyed dude. Um, so we will pick that up a bit. Um, and... Yeah, I guess we'll do this. Palette paper, if anyone's curious. I, again, did I say cheap? I am cheap. Wax paper. Um, it's fine, you know, because... Especially with acrylic, I mean, it's not going to last because it's going to dry out, right? Um, so we're going to start, I think his eyes are basically um, chrome oxide green um, with a little white in it. But we're going to, because this is such a big area and I'm running low on the chrome green, I might have another one in the uh, other room. But uh, what I do have is a whole bunch of chroma um, thallo green, so, and this is old, old paint, um, so we're just gonna gob stuff on and, uh, get a base coat going, um, and throw a little yellow in, and I am definitely not putting myself out there as, like, a painting instructor. There are better ways to do everything that I do, but I just do it the way I do. And I'm more about showing process, so I'm probably going to have to add... Oh, that's kind of a nice emerald shade. I don't know how well it shows up. Uh, oh, the yellow, uh, Hansi Yellow Medium. I still have some Steven Stevenson brands, or tubes of paint from Stevenson brand, which they went out of business, apparently, years ago. I actually still have some tubes from when I was, like, briefly a, an Emily Carr Foundation student in the 90s. <laughs> because I think it's like, I forget that I have a color, and then I buy fresh, and then I just use out whatever tube is closest to me. So, I... Actually, in this painting, the workshop I did for it was when I finally used up some of the old, uh... The last of my original tubes of Stevenson Titanium White, which is absurd when you think about it. Um, and these are just cheap ass brushes. I uh, can't even see. I think they're uh, probably whatever was in the art section at uh, Home Sense because, you know, brushes get messed up. So there we go. And. We'll see. I've got the letters drawn out, so in theory what I should do is go around each of them. We'll see how long that I can tolerate that. I may just say, screw it, paint over it, and add the uh, letters in afterwards. 90% chance, chance that's how it's going to end up happening, but we'll see. Um... Especially if I want to talk while I do this, because it's hard to talk and paint and concentrate. And letter is, lettering is fiddly. Actually, you know, I was a little worried that a green podium 
It's going to look messed up with the uh, blue and orange kind of uh, color in the background. But then, I mean, hey, green is made up of uh, blue and yellow, so it's kind of not that far off. Um, but I kind of like the way this is looking. So why don't I blather a bit more about Miles while I'm doing this. So we know who this little bastard is. Um, and um, so the story with Miles is, um, so Baby is uh, Ricky's girlfriend. Uh, and she's a bit of a bimbo. Um, just kind of ended up that way because I'm Sounds very kooky, I'm sure, but I am a big believer in let your characters tell you who they want to be. Um, or at least that, that that's usually how it works out better if you do it that way. Um, so, uh, anyways, and Baby seemed to want to be a uh, beauty queen girl who's a cosmetology student and the youngest of five daughters, and all this stuff kind of started came, coming out in the brainstorming. Ricky, uh, I guess I should explain that for anyone who have, I know I have more subscribers on my channel than on uh, Ricky B. Rat. Well, as far as YouTube goes. Um, different story on Facebook. But um, anyway, so Ricky was inspired by the Bonomo sketchbook I posted a video of. Oh, I'm painting stuff that isn't in frame. Excuse me. There we go. See, this is what happens when I'm like trying to paint and talk and not, and then the video on top. So uh, I think I'm probably this stuff I'm going to worry about with a bigger brush after. Um, but yes, so Ricky evolved out of the Bono Mouse sketchbook that I posted a tour of last week. And um, he ended up, well, I just said about letting your characters tell you who they want to be. Ricky ended up being a guy who is the low man on, it, on the totem pole at a recording studio. Um, he works for Big Mike, um, who is like one of, if not the biggest music, pro rock and roll music producers in Mouston, or not Mouston, pardon me. There's a bit of a rivalry between Mouston and um, Ratsville. So how dare I say, make that mistake? Um, but anyways, in Ratsville, Big Mike owns a studio called Rat Trap Studios. They work with a lot of big bands that you may have heard of, like uh, Nickel Rat. <laughs> um, and... The visual gag I have going in um, the graphic novel version that I'm working on right now is um, a band called HVAC. <laughs> so basically HVAC system, but um, that's Rats, Ratlin's version of um, ACDC. So you know what? I am, screw it. I know what I said about, oh, I may uh, go and outline. That's going to drive me insane. So I'm just going to get a big old brush and we're just going to fill this shit in uh, because we will be here forever and um, and as I know from up here my grid and uh, the letters are going to show through anyways so let me just get the excess off of the brush and then we will stick in my water and let's grab another fatter brush. That's faster, right? <laughs> uh, anyways, so yeah, so Big Mike owns this uh, Rat Trap Studios and works with a lot of big bands. And then Ricky um, used to hang out in the alleyway, hoping to get autographs as a kid and teenager, and then and used to get chased away by Big Mike. Um, I tell some of this story, and um, like there's a podcast now that I'm doing. Uh, the Ricky B. Rat Podcast Edition on a different channel, but I do link it in the um, community tab of this channel. Um, I'll stick the link down below. Um, but he does explain how it is he came to be working in showbiz for Big Mike. And um, 
why is this relevant? Okay, so anyways, just kind of a background of who Ricky is. Uh, and he's a kind of punk rocker dude. He uh, idolizes Sid Vicious and all this. And then the girlfriend is... Uh, well, I guess if you want to go... Not that I thought of this until just now, but if you want to uh, look at things from a, like, um, breakfast club kind of perspective... Uh, Ricky's a bit of uh, the stoner guy who ends up with Molly Ringwald and uh, Baby, well, Baby would be the Molly Ringwald. Um, plus, you know, it pisses off her parents and that's always a fun thing for any young female who has arguments with her dad. Um, and got a little bit showing through here. So anyways, um... But Baby's dad is uh, Kevin Ratson. He's some sort of executive. He hasn't... I haven't uh, figured out exactly what he does other than he's like a... Maybe not a CEO, but like a vice president or something of some big company. Um, you know, he has to earn a lot of money because his uh, wife and daughter shop constantly. Um, so... Uh, anyways, then... Uh, I will need to throw in a little bit more paint, just a little bit, because I never mix up the right amount. I either have like 20 times the amount of paint I want, or like a fifth of what I need. So let me uh, get just a little bit more for this background layer, but uh, we, uh, while I do that, we will zoom out. And see, I moved the camera closer so it's harder to see, but I think that green block is kind of a good contrast. Um, so anyway, so Kevin Ratson, his sister Belinda is a bit of a kook and kind of a wine ant type of, you know, you know the type, right? And I say that as a woman in her 40s who is single. I'm not into wine though, I'm into uh, sugar. Um, <laughs> sugar and shopping, baby, all the way. Uh, but anyways, uh, so Belinda is that kind of gal. And one fine, and she's always been that kind of gal, even going back to, um, you know, you know, 30, 28 years ago. Um, anyways, Belinda likes her wine and her booze, and one St. Patrick's Day... I mentioned that Mostin is the town across the canyon, and there's a bit of a rivalry. Well, one fine St. Patrick's Day, Belinda, being completely plastered, but driving in nonetheless, somehow she ended up over in Mostin. They're not fond of uh, rats over in Mostin, in Mostin, probably because the young thugs of Ratsville have this um, tradition, hobby, whatever you want to call it, called Friday Night Mostin Mayhem. Which is to say, they go over and they beat the living shit over random mice that they find. Um, why did I put such um, such a thing into uh, the story? Well, when I started drawing um, Ricky, you know, Facebook starts, and then you, you know how you do, you mention, oh, I'm working on such and such, it involves rats, and there's a punk rock rat dude and whatnot, and then, you know, the algorithm starts picking up words that you're typing, and showing you content based on that, right? So I start getting all this stuff about mice and rats. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. That sounds like free research, right? Awesome. So I started reading it, and it was kind of fascinating to find out all this stuff about how mice and rats behave and all this stuff. But one of the things that I somehow stumbled upon, which wasn't on Facebook, but was, I think, led by a Facebook link, was talking about how mice and rats interact, which is just, and it's not good. Like, seriously, rats actually eat mice. I never knew that. But um, no, the, um, they're predators, um, at least in terms of little critters like mice, and they will eat mice. Uh, but, you know, when you're going to have humanoid characters, like I didn't want to have like the rats actually going over to Mouston and literally eating the mice. It's like, okay, that's a little too horror show, right? 
Um, so instead I kind of made it like, well, they're thugs and they go and they just, like, their idea of Friday night fun is to go beat the shit out of random mice. And they call it Most in Mayhem. Um, Ricky insists he doesn't engage in the this sort of behavior, but he does drive getaway for his cousins who love it. That's their favorite sport. Um, anyways, um, and while I'm talking that, I've made up a little extra. I'm going to turn and paint the edge. Um, some people like to black out the edges of their canvases. I don't because I can never get it looking straight. So I'll either end up with black on the front or color on the side on top of the black. Anyways, it's a freaking mess. So I just wrap my color and um, I'm also going to do that on the bottom. But that might be a little awkward. Well, I'll just put them on its side. Sorry, Miles. Um, Anyways, so, um, so most of my, yeah. so that's how that happened. But the point is, um, cause I'm talking about the character world, uh, clearly in a situation like that, rats, even female rats would not be particularly welcome in, um, Mouston. Um, but so we got this dude, Larry, who's a, one of the richer dudes in Mouston. And he happens to be a playboy, um, or he fancies himself as that. He's a womanizer. And he sees this rat broad come in, and you're thinking, you know, maybe today's my lucky day. Obviously, he got balls of steel, right? Because <laughs> you know, she could have been bait for a bunch of rat dudes to beat the living shit out of him or whatever. Um, but now, Larry liked his chances, so Larry hit on her name's Belinda. And Belinda wakes up the next morning in bed with a, a mouse. <laughs> um, and sad to see that wasn't a happy, happily ever after story. They hate each other's guts. Um, but she got knocked up. And, you know, however long, however long a rat mouse person's um, gestational period is, for the sake of argument, we'll say nine months. Because... Um, <laughs> That kind of relates to what we know. Um, out comes Baby Miles, who's half mouse and half rat, and I need more paint yet again. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, and you think about the size differential between a rat and a mouse. Um, it was decided a because Larry is uh, Larry's a womanizer and kind of a playboy and whatnot. Not the marrying kind, let's just say. Um, and Belinda is a kook and extremely annoying, uh, actually. So they didn't end up getting married. The bait. Well, I think I already said that, right? Now I'm like mixing pain and talking and losing track of what I'm saying. But. Oh, hey. Somebody's calling. What do you, what do you want to bet it's a scammer? I'm going to edit this out, though. Hello? 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 Uh, what's this about? If uh, this is the whole thing about, oh, we're giving 30% off, blah, 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 TELUS can apply it to my next bill. I'm not talking to anyone over the phone. Bye. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave that in um, just because I've uh, I have been having calls lately from two. This is the second one today. One was from TELUS, which is one of the biggest phone companies in uh, BC. or It's kind of like between uh, TELUS and uh, Rogers. So yesterday I got a call, the dude's like trying to say, oh, you know, well, you know, I'm calling on behalf of TELUS. We're running this promotion to give you 30% off your bill uh, because, you know, we've lost 20,000 customers over billing in the last, you know, whatever period of time, which by the way, like no company's ever going to admit that, even if it's true. Um, <laughs> and... 
Then he started, and I'm like, oh, really? Why don't you guys just give me a rebate? Like, because that's what ICBC does, um, which I know it's a different industry, but um, in here in British Columbia, um, I don't know if they gave it to everybody, but certainly most people, like, who have their insurance through IC, um, Insurance Corporation of British Columbia got a, like, a check in the mail for 110 bucks as a rebate, you know, a few months ago. So, anyways, hypothetically speaking, and here I am talking about something that has nothing to do with Mouston, uh, but, um, hypothetically speaking, if the company thought they were charging too much, wouldn't they just give a rebate on your bill? And the guy's trying to argue with me, and I automatically, I'm like, okay, this guy's full of shit, right? And then he starts saying, so may I ask you what your bill is? And I'm like, if you're actually calling from TELUS, you would know what my bill is. Oh, no, 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 uh, we will send you the the the, uh, the information in an email for you to sign up for it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, that's bullshit. If you guys are actually reducing my bill, you can just give me a rebate on my bill or send me a check. Okay, but we need your info. No. And anyways, I hung up on the guy. And I got, this, you know, something similar earlier today, but calling from Rogers, wanting to reduce my Rogers bill. And it's like, I don't have a Rogers bill, but only, you know, the, uh, the scammers, I guess, are giving a fake, a better fake deal to the Rogers people because the guy who claimed to be calling from Rogers was saying he was going to give me 40% off. Now, I don't have a Rogers bill, so, you know, 40% off of zero is still zero. Um, anyways, obviously, I hung up. So, you know what? I'm not going to edit out that bit where I got the call from another scammer pretending to be from TELUS. Hi, it's blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, you're not. You're not from TELUS uh, because if you were, first of all, you wouldn't just be like a vague hi. Uh, you know, like they, when it's actually the company, they know what your name is. Hi, can I speak to Ms. Draculea? Even though, granted, they always butcher my name. They get the pronunciation wrong, but that's fine. Um, so anyways, <laughs> we'll leave that in. Um, Probably guys from Mouston calling, you know what I mean? They're kind of scammers over in Mouston. At least that's what the rats say. Um, it's part of their justification for why they beat the shit out of uh, rats. So there, now we're back on topic. Um, so I've blocked in that. I'll do more uh, touch-ups on that. Because I'm going to put this right back down, and this is the bottom edge. It's going to stick to my, can my uh, little... Um, easel, but that's okay. It'll leave a white line. That's okay. We will fix it later. Um, come on, Miles, you bastard. Um, so anyways, what was I talking? I was giving the story of Miles' parents and their, I won't say love story, but uh, their one night stand booty call story. Anyways, so, oh yeah, what I was going to say before the phone rang is you have a size differential. I'm just going through, oops, it would help if I move this back down, right? There. I'm going through where I can see little spots going through the paint. Um, they're not white because they are been painted green, but whatever. Um, so anyways, um, yeah, size. So if you think about how much bigger a rat is than a mouse and that they prey on mice, so by the way, in nature, mice and rats do not breed, obviously, but this is a cartoon world. Mice and rats also don't work as accountants or in recording studios, right? So we take some liberties. Um, so it was decided by um, Larry and Belinda that their little spawn, if he was raised in most, in, if he was raised in um, Ratsville, he'd be a lot smaller than the rats, and we already know rats like to beat the living crap out of mice in this cartoon world, right? So, in order to spare Miles, he was raised by his dad, however unqualified Larry may have been, um, in Mouston. So, dad's rich, he owns a bunch of car lots, and Miles is like, grew at full grown, he, the way I draw him, he comes up to Ricky's shoulder, so he's a head shorter than Ricky, but he's a head taller than any of the mice. So this is the big hulking bully of, um, you know, whatever private prep school uh, Larry sent uh, Miles to. So that's Miles' background. 
Um, and he has a, you know, what in Mouston would be deserved confidence, but in Ratsville probably not so much. But anyways, Miles is a smart dude. Uh, he's kind of smart more in the uh, conniving sort of way, but smart nonetheless. Um, and, you know, uh, I have a story where he has decided to move, you know, when he's 28, um, full grown. Um, there's a story, it's actually a Christmas story that's going to be in an anthology that my writer's group is working on. Um, it's like everybody else is writing heartfelt Christmas stories, heartwarming ones, and I'm writing a story of like Miles uh, moving to Mostyn to set up his own accounting firm so he can, well, rip off. But he doesn't say rip off, but you know, because he feels that the Ratsville um, rats need his accounting services. Um, so, anyways, he moves over there and, you know, he's a little bit disappointed when uh, baby Ratson is introducing him to her friends because, you know, he's staying at his mom's place over Christmas, so, which is to say he can't bring chicks home to bang them. It's just a little bit of a waste and all. Anyways, um, We'll talk more about that story when the book comes out, and then I can uh, sort of shill a little bit. Now, this obviously has to dry before I can put lettering over top of it. So why don't we... I don't know how long this video is. We're not going to go too long, but I still need to block in the tie and the microphone. So let's do that, and then we'll probably call it a day on this video. I may shoot, I may shoot some more, or I might just do like a quick reel when the thing's finished. I don't want to like have like an hour long video every day of working on Miles and it would be weird to kind of spread it out. Yeah, who knows? Maybe I will. Maybe I'll be bored tomorrow afternoon and go, you know what? A, I'm going to work on the thing and B, I'm going to talk at the camera um, while I do it. But let's fill in his tie. So, uh, yeah, we'll excuse the bumpiness while I move the... Um well, I moved the tripod back, so there's kind of a broader thing. So we will add in, probably tomorrow or whatnot, we will add in more stuff. Now, I, uh, let me zoom in. Probably see, I don't know how clear that is, and that's actually not the spot I wanted to go to. Yeah, you can see in here some of the uh, canvas showing through. Um, I mean, it's covered in a wash, but I will probably tidy some of that stuff up or where was the other couple of egregious spots around here and whatnot where we're missing and I got to tidy up it. I'm not sure I'll change his skin tone too much. I kind of like it and like, yeah, he's got some, uh, this reflected, but that's reflected off the background, right off the flags. So, um, and actually what my, um, workshop mate kind of joked and she said, you should have him rub Cheeto dust on his face. <laughs> of course, we're, this is a bit of a joke about Trump's spray tan, but the thing is, I could totally see Miles Dewey, like, literally rubbing Cheeto dust on his face going, here, will you vote for me now? The reality is that rats we've already established in this fictional world, not so big fan, big, not such big fans of mice. So, will they actually vote for a half mouse dude? Yeah, possibly not. The other thing that we have, um, I'm just kind of aim at his tie while I try and decide what color and I and keep on talking. Um, be tempted to do orange and green stripes, but then he's gonna look Irish. Um, <laughs> Which, who knows, maybe maybe he is. You know, St. Patrick kicks, kicked the snakes out of Ireland, so probably the uh, the mice and the rats of Ireland kind of appreciate that gesture. Um, but anyways, excuse the noise of the uh, bag of paints, because that's the easiest way to move things around. Uh, got a red tie. No. That would be a D. 
do think it should have orange stripes and would it be too repetitive of the flag if I did it orange and yellow? Maybe. And we don't want it white because he's wearing a white shirt, even though I got touch up. Some blue smudged in there. Uh, doo -doo. If I did orange and black, that's a little too Halloween. If I did orange and purple, it's a little too Halloween. Uh, well, I have an idea about orange and purple. If it looks bad, I will paint over it when it, after it dries. So. God, hands the orange. Hello, are we focused? No, we're not focused. There we go. Um, so we will start with that. And then I gotta add the add. So I'm going that and that and that, and it makes absolutely no sense for anyone who can't read my brain. So what else was I gonna say? Um, probably need a lot more. Well, it's straight out of the tube, so it doesn't matter. Um, so, so anyways, uh, so Miles grew up being a little bit of a bully, a uh, spoiled rich kid. Um, and he's used to getting what he wants. Um, yeah, what else can we say about Miles? Miles is very convinced, uh, possibly with good reason based on personal experience that uh, females, at least uh, most chicks, like dirt bags, <laughs> which probably is because he does okay with the ladies, um, and he's a dirt bag. <laughs> bit of a dirt bag. Uh, maybe I need to add a little bit of white to make that a little more opaque. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add mix Hansa, Hansa orange with yellow ochre, and because the yellow ochre is also not what am I talking about? Yellow ochre isn't opaque either. Uh, that's what's in the stripes. Do to do. more rustling of the bag as I looked up digging for paint colors. First I'm going to make his, uh, first, I hit things first, I think I'm going to make his tie white and black because that is going opaque enough to knock out that grid. And then afterwards I'm going to go in and add color on top. We'll see if that matters. I'm definitely going to have to do something about the grid popping through, is it? I'm trying to look for a spot like, you know, that's probably just out of focus, but like here, um, that grid really shows. So, uh, anyways, Mars Black, let's do this, stick that brush back in there. Uh, more rustling because I've... I usually keep most of my painting supplies in um, got the family room set up as a studio, but painting is messy. I'd rather be cl closer to the laundry room sink. And this little room is kind of a dead zone in the house. It's formerly an outside porch. Some previous owner, decades ago, closed in into a odd little nook space, mud room sort of thing. So I end up using it as a painting studio. Um, I guess this is the, right now. It's already looking like the tie that Miles will be wearing on uh, his Halloween campaign stop. Now is he actually going to hand out? Um, Candy to the little kids. He seems almost more like the kind of know-it-all who would hand out uh, toothbrushes. <laughs> Mostly because he's cheap. 
And then I said, I know I said, I'm cheap, but no, this house, I just do fistfuls of candy in each kid's bucket. I ain't got time to like count out two pieces each and get a couple hundred kids that come in here on Halloween. So ain't nobody got time for that, especially when they come in like groups of 10. But, um, mind you, there's a very, va no, you know what Miles would do on Halloween? It's hand out candy to the kiddos, um, but expense it as a campaign expense. <laughs> That's what Miles would do. Uh, and what am I? What am I learning from this? I am learning: don't use a dark green paint pen. Use a pale pink paint pen. Um, Cause we got a lot of shit. I gotta. Pardon my language. I got a lot of stuff I got to um, go over again um, in order to knock out that grid. <laughs> and there is a stripe in his uh, that goes this way in his thing, but that's gonna basically blend into the microphone, and we will do the microphone rough in as well right now. If I need reference for the details of the microphone, I just I have a printed out version of the where I had like photoshopped. I actually put two photos of Trump together for the reference for this, like one where he's looking up with his head going the same direction as Miles, and the other where he was looking dead ahead. So I stuck one Trump head body head on a different Trump body. Um, and then I did a layer in, um, uh, what you call it, uh, what's the one on iPad, uh, Procreate. I should know this. I use Procreate every day. Uh, the thing, that's what, the thing is, the, the, you know, the drawing app. Anyways, um, I added a layer on top that had, uh, Miles cartooned on and then printed it out where I made the reference photo paler. I basically, I printed like four different images um, so I could use different ones for different stages. And there. Uh, I foresee time coming in with a very fine detail brush and a lot of different colors fixing all this shit. Um, I have friends who paint very on very big canvases who are very insistent that all you need is like a size four flat. Uh, this is a five, so it's slightly smaller than this and like a one inch flat and whatnot, and you're good. You don't need any fine detail brushes. It's like, yeah, but your your canvases are six foot by six foot. <laughs> you know, you're not doing little detail like around his whiskers and whatnot. So we have... Uh, Mind you, as I said, I am cheap. These are cheap brushes, but even my more expensive brushes tend to splay out unless they're the ones that are actually like really fine liners. The ones that have like one inch bristles and they're like an eighth of an inch across max. Um, so if you use uh, bristle brushes like the boar bristles, those things always are gonna splay out. There's just no way you can get a really clean line. Uh, some people do it with masking tape, but if you're trying to do something like this that curves, masking tape is more trouble than it's worth, honestly. Um, do, 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 where is... We'll do a, a softer bristle round. Um, Filling these in. I'm not going to worry too much if I get a little, um, a little uh, smearing at the edges like that. That's fine. We call that shading. This is going to be orange underneath. Or hey, am I saying over underneath? It's going to be orange on top. <laughs> Put purple on the black after it dries. 
So, uh, what else can I say about Miles? Um, so, yeah, uh, in the podcast, we're going to end up having a little bit more for Miles going forward. We haven't, we've had mention of him, but um, the idea with the podcast, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that you haven't listened because, you know, it's a brand new podcast and all that sort of stuff is um, basically Ricky and the, at the end of a long day at the studio um, having just a little bit of time and he get, gets on mic after everybody else has gone home and he talks about what's going on in the studio. I do it on the every couple of Mondays, so like the first Monday of the month and the third usually. I've only been doing it for about a month, but I've been planning it for longer than that. So I have a lot of scripts written. Um, and um, anyways, so the first episode was Ricky telling the story of his boss, Big Mike, getting in a fight with one of the uh, mix engineers, Jeff, and um, arguing over, um, both of them went to see the Dalai Lama, but Jeff's ticket was a lot closer and a lot cheaper. Um, so that is the first episode called Jeff vs. Big Mike. And then the, um, and there's kind of a gag in there where Ricky doesn't really, says he doesn't know what to say, which I find it hilarious. Some people would be like, well, why do you have a podcast then if they don't quite get that that's the character? Um, yeah, that's a, quite the black line. Um, and actually, while I've got some gray on the brush, I'm going to do a little... Uh, can I get that to show up? Yeah, see, this corner point is not... Not super good. So let's just take the littlest bit there and kind of clear up the edge there. And then we got another area because that grid is coming through in Miles' eyeballs. Ah! Well, just the one eyeball. The other one, because he's got his head tilted, you can see that uh, grid line comes through here. So. So I have the kind of a gray color that matches where his eyeballs are. I'm going to touch that up. That gone. Uh, I think that is gone. And yeah, it doesn't really show in the other eye. Um, and I'm going to let this dry. I could definitely, um, let me, I keep pointing at things and forgetting that they're not in camera. Okay, like there. Does that focus? Yeah, it's focused, I think. But you can kind of see the grid line come through here. All that I have to go over. Um, that's funny, now I'm looking and what I just painted in his eyeball seems to again show And I'm doing that off camera too. Um, so let's back up so we can sort of see because I think this video has been long enough and there you can see in my kitchen. It's not entirely messy today, but there we go. So I'm waving a paintbrush around. Um, so that's the current stage. Is there a hair in my freaking... Excuse me. Can't tell if that was a hair. Probably, I'm talking about something that probably doesn't show up, but it was like a super thin, super straight line. It looked like it might be a, um, a hair from the brush. Anyways, so we made some progress on Miles here on uh, his uh, campaign photo op press conference. Probably He's probably on mic about to tell the uh, people from the media, which would be like K-Rat Channel 7, mentioned in the second Ricky podcast, um, 
and all them how stupid they are and how smart Miles is because you know he was raised to think he's the uh, genius. Um, but uh, there you go. That's progress for today. Uh, even if I don't film finishing the painting, like I'll try and do a real kind of scrolling over it so y'all can see how it looks finished. Um, and hopefully I'll have pictures of this with a ribbon on it to post on my community tab in a, what, three weeks? Um, but who knows? It might not get finished, but I'm going to try. Um, so that is it for today's episode of I don't even have an episode title. I think when I was uh, doing some sketchbook tours last year, I was calling it Welcome to My Messy Art Desk or something, but it wasn't an actual title. It's just, I just posted on my YouTube and then shared the link. So anyways, I guess I should kind of stick my face in a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm always happier being behind the camera. It's like, I always think of, well, the point is to show you what I'm doing, not what I'm, not watching me at my face while my hands are doing something. Anyways, um, but yeah, so we've got Miles. We've explained a little bit about Miles. He needs some more work. Um, so yeah, we'll see how much of that I actually film. I probably should film it and then even though it'll be finished earlier, just, you know, post them every couple days and it'll be um, more extended on uh, posting time than actually showing up or what I actually talked about. I can't talk while I'm... <laughs> uh, apparently I'm not great that great at ad-libbing. But anyways, so hope you've enjoyed this little uh, A explanation of who this little bastard is and um, <laughs> filling in of his podium and underpainting his tie and whatnot and uh, fixing a couple grid spots. But um, there will be more videos on painting and whatnot on this channel to come on some sort of irregular schedule, at least for now. So that's it. Bye for now.